Well hey guys, you joined me working on John's Triumph TR6 here and John's asked me if I can convert his car from having an original style Lucas fuel pump to a Bosch fuel pump. So we've got this new Bosch fuel pump which is available from TRGB and it's a lot more simplified than other fuel pumps available on the market. They've made it so much better and it's really thought out by TRGB to actually fit to the car. It comes with a really decent set of instructions. So I'm going to run through with you what I've done so far with the car as regards to the wiring and then we'll get on and fit this new fuel pump to the car. So to start with, I've hardwired in a 20 amp inline fuse direct from the battery and that runs down here and through the bulkhead and along the side of the original wiring loom and all the way into the boot where it meets the relay. So the relay I've got positioned in the boot here and what we've got is the feed wire comes through here, the brown wire, and then that goes through to the other side which then will go down here to the new fuel pump which will be on the outside of the boot panel here. And then what we're going to be doing is utilising the original wiring loom which comes to the current fuel pump which has got feed here and an earth here and again just utilising the wires on the relay coming down here to be the trigger wire for the relay. Right then, that's all the electrics explained to you and how I've got that all sorted out for the new fuel pump. So the next thing we're going to have to do is remove all of the Lucas fuel gear and get it ready for fitting the new Bosch fuel pump. But the first thing we're going to have to do is drain the fuel tank. So let's get on with that. Okay, I'm going to put a towel down here to catch any excess fuel that comes out just underneath the tank and the filter and then just clamping off the feed pipe here which goes from the tank to the fuel filter and just undo the bolt that goes to the filter here it's going to empty a little bit of fuel out there we go and then with the petrol can here just undoing the clamp because we're going to be changing this little feed pipe up here for a slightly bigger bore one which is included from TRGB as you see there the fuel's just coming out nicely into the can and if we just leave that over there just out the way then next we're going to get rid of this pipe from the filter that feeds the pump and then we'll take out these two nuts and bolts and get rid of the fuel filter itself so we just crack off this feed pipe, right, hopefully not too much fuel is going to come out, if we just put a bit of towel underneath there, just to be sure, go it's just dribbling a little bit but that's okay and then we can crack off the nut and bolt down here for the fuel filter fuel filter removed from the car. Okay next we'll get rid of the fuel pump and if we just put the towel underneath here where the fuel pump connection is and just undo this connection here just in case there's any excess fuel at least it's not going to go on the paintwork. And because this fuel pump's got a PRV 
cooling system on it which is a modified system that Lucas developed we're going to have to undo the fuel pipe here at the PRV and take that out of the way and again just put the towel underneath just in case there's any excess fuel again we don't want it going on the paintwork and then we can just remove the feed wire and earth wire to the fuel pump and then we'll have to get inside the wheel arch to undo the three mounting bolts. Okay, the three mounting screws for the pump are here inside the wheel arch and we're just going to have to undo those and hopefully it's not spinning on the other side. It should just come out nicely. So that's one. Two. Three. And then what we'll do with these little holes is just put a few grommets through them just to stop any corrosion from happening. But moving back to the boot space, we can now remove the fuel pump. And we've got this hose that just goes up to the return to the tank. We're replacing this hose anyway with the new PRV that we're fitting. So we can just cut this hose off. Here. And then remove the fuel pump. Now last in the chain, we've just got to get rid of this PRV pencil valve here again just a little bit of towel underneath for any excess fuel unfortunately that's come out quite easy sometimes this can be a real pig to remove and there we go that's out the way there and then get rid of this feed pipe which would come from the fuel pump. And we're gonna replace this with a new pipe, which will go to the new pump for a slightly shorter pipe. And last in the chain is to remove this top pipe here. That's the return pipe from the PRV. we're going to be replacing the PRV with a new diaphragm one as opposed to the original pencil type fit one. Just give it a little wiggle. And there we go. That's that removed. Okay guys, we've got to the point of actually installing the new fuel pump now and just following the instructions that come with the new pump from TRGB, they're really nice and clear about where you need to drill the holes for the actual pipes that go from the fuel tank down out to the fuel filter and from the fuel filter back up to the PRV T piece there. So what I've done, I've just followed these instructions, I've just done a little pilot hole where it tells me to do one each side there and now I'm just going to bore it out to the right size and then we can feed the pipes down to the right places.
Okay, next stage is to uh, fit the actual pipes from the fuel tank and to the PRV, which will go down to the fuel pump and the fuel filter. Now, what we've got to do on the actual tank is change the fitting down the bottom here because the TRGB one is actually slightly bigger bore, which is great for fuel flow. So, let's get this off and the two pipes fitted. Okay, we've got the towel back down in the boot and we are out of fuel so we'll just put that to one side so hopefully there shouldn't be any fuel left in the tank and if we just unhook the fuel pipe at the bottom of the fuel tank here and yep completely empty of fuel and then the new connector, as I said, is a slightly bigger bore than the old connector. Um, can then go in place of where the old one is. And just nip that up. And then just get rid of this towel. And then the new feed pipe can go in place with the Jubilee clip to hold it nice and secure to the bottom of the tank. Just there. Just tighten that in place just there and then when we've got this all sort of cut to length and about right on the pump we'll secure this pipe over towards the back panel just here where the spare wheel well goes so it's not in the way then next we need to feed in the high pressure pipe from above there through the hole and just put it into the T-piece. We're not going to fully tighten that just yet until we've got the fuel pump in place so we know that this pipe isn't under any under any strain. And then we can move on to mounting the fuel pump. Okay, and the next step is to take these mounting bungs off the back of the fuel pump. And just put them away in a safe place for now and then we'll just put the pump to roughly where it needs to go just hooking up this high pressure pipe to the pump itself we don't need to put up the low pressure pipe just yet the feed pipe just the outward going pipe and then roughly put it where it needs to be mounted so we know where we're going to be drilling the holes. And I'd say about a finger width from the chassis upwards, and then it needs to be about a finger width out. And we can just push her in to the actual car body itself there. And if we just use a little bit of marking fluid, so we can mark around the actual fuel pump there. and that should give us a rough indication. If we just do a few little marks, should give us a rough indication of where this mounting plate needs to go. Now I've got my finger width underneath the bottom, so I know when I pull it out, that's how tall it's gonna be up there. And I've got a few marks just on the actual car body itself. So now if I just take the fuel pump off, as you can see, I've, there's marks now there on the body and I'm going to have to take apart the fuel pump so I know where the drill holes are so I can stamp those on the body and then drill it out and then mount this plate and then remount the pump to the mounting plate and then we can start plumbing up the actual fuel pump itself.
to the car. Okay, if we just take the pump and the fuel filter off of the fuel pump mounting bracket, and it's just these three Allen screws that hold it in place. That should just come out there like that. And then we can use the actual mounting there on the body so we can mark out where we need to center punch the holes to mount this bracket. And then using our marking fluid as a guide from earlier, we can see where the actual fuel pump mounting bracket was. And if you just use this self-tapping center punch, just mark the holes. where they need to go. They can be a little bit out, it doesn't have to be exactly right because there are flexible joints and the hoses are a little bit flexible. So Then we can drill where the mounting holes need to go. one and just double check again with the second one as always check twice cut once And then we'll get some paint around those holes, tidy it up, and then mount the fuel pump. Right then, let's get these holes just painted. Just a little bit of protection from the elements, and may as well, well I've got the black paint out, just paint over where I've just done the white marker. It's only touch up white marker paint anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Just more for looks sake. Then, we can get the mounting bracket and put the mounting bungs in place. And just hand tight and a bit. And then, And then we can mount that. Onto the boot panel. And I'll just tighten that up inside the car. And nice and easy, just one washer. One nut. And a washer and a nut. And just tighten those up. Okay, if we get the fuel pump in next, and firstly, just get it in place on the actual pipe. That just saves us struggling against the pipe. There. And then, just get its mounting grommets in place there. It can actually move 
along the mounting grommets a little bit backwards and forwards so hence why I'm not too worried about the positioning of the actual mounting plate to the body because there is a bit of free play that way and a bit of free play that way as to where it's mounted so long as it's reasonably horizontal and away from the chassis it's perfectly fine and that seems to be reasonably in place there and the great thing is about this idea from TIGB is that if you ever have to replace the fuel filter for whatever reason maintenance it's quite easy just to undo these three mounting screws here and take away the fuel filter clamp off the two ends on the pipe and replace the filter for maintenance purposes but once it's all in place it's nice and tight and it isn't going to go anywhere so if I just take the other end of the mounting and put it in place there got these three mounting screws to go in place that we took apart earlier hopefully they should bite up quite nicely just loosely putting them in first just make sure they bite and then we'll tighten them up all evenly when we've got the pump roughly about where we want it so that's the bottom one in the middle one in and the top one there is just gripped and then we just kind of edge of the pump to about where we want it so that this pipe going up into the boot floor isn't under too much strain nor the pumps under too much strain either so I'd say about there's about right and then we can just tighten up the middle one here first just to even out the load on the pump And then the bottom one, we'll just tighten that one up. And then last, just tighten up that top one. And now the actual feed pipe to the fuel filter. As you can see, TRGB, they're quite generous with how much pipe they give us. We can gauge that to about the right length. We'll just be a little bit generous, have a quick look at the boot just to give ourselves a little bit more than what we need. It's, it's always best just to give yourself, be a little bit generous with the pipe because once you cut it, you've got what you've got. So it's much better to have a little bit too much pipe coming through because it's easier to shorten it than not have enough. So if we just have a look inside the actual boot itself, and I'd say that's about right there. And then coming out and just gauging it by eye again, and then we'll just cut that pipe just there. That seems to be about right. And the Jubilee clip up there and put that in place and just tighten that up nice and snug. And now 
because this is all reasonably in place. We've got a positive here, which we're gonna feed another wire coming through the boot floor pan here, and a negative, which we can just feed again back through the same hole and to an earth point, but we can actually now tighten up this pipe here on the fuel pump. And this is running at 100 psi, so it's got to be reasonably tight. That should do. Okay, we can now tighten up the fuel hose here to the T-piece. And again, it's got to be pretty reasonably tight because this pipe here is going to be running at around about 100 psi. So we don't want any fuel leaks. Now John has opted for an uprated PRV, which is a diaphragm type over the original pencil type. And to get this in place on John's one, I mean, they're all different, you know, but I've had to actually bend over the little plate here, which would house the fuel filter originally because it's just fouling on the bottom of the PRV. And you don't want to cause a vibration in the car. So just bend it over, just gives it a little bit of free play underneath so it doesn't hit anything. It's a little bit frustrating because I wouldn't really want to do that ordinarily, but sometimes you have to adapt these things. It's not the original pressure relief valve, so you just have to sometimes adapt things around it. And I very much doubt John's ever going to go back to the original style now it's fitted in place. So if we just tighten that up in place there, And again, this has got to be pretty fairly tight because it's working on the back of the T-piece and again is at working at uh, over 100 PSI, well, top end 105 PSI. So we don't want any leaks. I just tighten up the back there. And we need a little bit of access here to, to this little nut here, which is where this is adjusted for the correct pressure in the fuel system. So just nice and tight there. And that's us near enough done in the boot. We just need to make another little hole down here on the floor pan for the feed wire for the fuel pump and also the um, earth wire to come up and be grounded somewhere. So if we just do that next. Right, okay, we're gonna wire up the fuel pump now. As we already know from earlier in the video, we've got the relay in place. The relay is fed by a good fused earth from the battery there with brown wire, and on the other side, which is gonna go to the fuel pump, is this white wire with a black tracer. And if I just poke that through, the little grommet just here and try and get it through. Oh, I just poked the grommet through. Never mind, we can sort that out in a bit. And then I've got another wire from the bottom here. If I just grab that, and that's a little brown wire for the earth on the fuel pump. And we're just keeping this away from the body on, on the underside of the car. I want to really earth this on the side of the fuel tank mounting bolt here because it's a nice clean earth. It's just away from everything. So for the time being, just gonna push that over there to one side. And then the relay, as I said earlier, we're utilizing the original fuel pump wiring for the actual trigger wire for the relay. So we've got this wired up with a white wire and a blue tracer, and that's gonna go in the original white wire with, with what looks like a uh, green tracer. And we'll just put that in place there. I know this already works because I have actually tested it. So I'm not too concerned about that. And then I've got the black wire here, which is gonna go into the black earth wire just there on the original fuel 
pump wiring so that can hide out the way over there and then the last thing we're going to have to do in the boot is just put in the piece of hose which will come from the PRV and go back up to the tank so if we get that done next right so just one hose to hook up to the PRV here it's a bit of a tight fit if we just tighten that up there that should do nicely And this is under low pressure, so it's not as critical as the other pipes and hoses. But we're dealing with fuel, so you've always got to take caution. And then the other end can just go to the top of the tank, and again, just sort of gauging the length. And we'll just cut that just a little bit longer than what we need. It's always better to just go snad longer than what we need. Say, then be too short. And then, as for the other end, we can just discard the old pipe off of the old hose, and the new hose can go into place with a new Jubilee clip on it, and just push that home. It is a little low OTT using Jubilee clips on these because they are low pressure, but I think you're better off being safe than sorry. And we just sort of gauge where that needs to be in place there. And we know we haven't got the hose in any stress position. And then we can get the Jubilee clip in place and secure it to the hose. And just a little bit of pre for we've got Jubilee clip at the bottom here, which is a lot more easy to access if ever we need to take this off. And then just put this little pipe in the top there of the tank. And this is all working blind, so it's all doing it by feel. There we are, it started to turn. And then just nip it up with a half inch spanner. Of course, if you was converting a car and not changing the PRV as well, which is perfectly fine to do so, you wouldn't be doing this part of the job but as John has decided to change his PRV at the same time, which I think is a good idea, then this is all new plumbing work to the car. And there we go, that's just nipped up tight. So if we next just wire up the fuel pump down the bottom, and we'll go from there. Okay, two simple wires to wire this up. We've got positive at the top, which is the white with black tracer. So if we just cut that to length. And just peel back the wire. And they come with a really nice grommet on the end there. So it just keeps all the moisture from the elements out and where we don't want it. And there's that grommet again, which I'm gonna have to sort out in a bit. Just peel that wire out here. And then that will just go onto a nice little eyelet connection, 
which we've got here onto that little joint there and just get my crimps in place and just crimp it once each side and then we can put the positive there on the positive terminal a little washer a little nut it's a six mil nut and just tighten that up Never go too tight with these terminals because they're so easy to over tighten them. They just want to be just nipped. And then we can just put the cover over the terminal there and that just stops any of the road rubbish getting into in where we don't want it and causing any grief. Just use a little screwdriver there just to help me with the grommet. Just get over the joint there. There we go. And then I've already done an eyelet connection on the the earth wire. So if I just pull up the earth wire there, just push that through the joint there, and the eyelet connection on there. washer and I believe this is an 8mm nut on the earth it's all labelled up on the side of the fuel pump there as well anyway so you've got nothing to worry about you know worrying whether that's a positive or a negative because it, it actually shows it here on the side of the pump positive at the top negative at the bottom and then just, again just tighten that up so they just want to be just a nip and a little bit and that's it never too tight but just tight enough and then that grommet can just go over there and that's it okay and the last bit of this conversion is just to give the fuel pump a good earth and i'm going to be using this little bolt up here which is a mounting bolt for the fuel tank as it's just away from all of the elements as it's inside the car so it gives a nice good clean earth so if we just take this off here and then if we get the wire and just check the length it's a little bit too long we'll just cut that down a little bit And then get the eyelet connection which we're going to use so we'll just strip the ends of the wire out and just twist those wires together hopefully that should make it easier just going into the eyelet connection and then just crimp that in place And the same on the other side. And then we can put that in place. With another little washer the other side. Of the eyelet connection. Just to space it out a bit because it seems to be a bit of a wide connection there. And then we'll put that up there back to where it belongs and then 
and just tighten that up. Then the next step is going to be to top up the fuel tank with fuel and then we'll um, have a go at adjusting this PRV to give us the right 100 psi pressure down the line. So the last thing we need to do is just check the pressure at the metering unit. Now we've got the new Bosch type fuel pump in place, we need to make sure that the pressure is right at the metering unit. And that needs to be around about 100 to 105 psi. So what we need to do is hook this in place between the high pressure pipe coming up to the metering unit and the metering unit itself. It just locks in between there and there. So let's get that done and then we'll adjust the PRV accordingly to make sure we've got the right pressure. Okay, that's the fuel gauge all plumbed in place and I'm just going to turn on the ignition and see what fuel pressure we're getting. And straight away there, 100 psi, so I don't need to adjust this at all. But if we did need to adjust it, I'm just going to show you what to do so you guys know how to adjust the fuel pressure gauge if you've got a diaphragm type. Now to adjust the PRV, what we would do is undo this locking nut at the back here, which would reveal a little screw here. And then we just turn this little dial at the back here, up or down, so left or right. And we'd go backwards and forwards and actually have a look at the gauge to see what was coming out at the actual pressure gauge with the ignition turned on. And we just keep adjusting that dial until we get the 100 PSI pressure coming through the system. 105 is still also okay for these cars, so anything 100 to 105, you're in the green sort of area. You don't want to be too low because you won't get a good spray out of your injectors, and you don't want to be too high because you're putting too much pressure on the system. So you want it about 100 to 105. And then obviously when you're finished, just put the uh, little screw back over this. And again, don't do it up too tight, it's just a little nip just to finish off. So all we've got left now to do is that we know that we're getting 100 psi on John's car. We just need to take off the gauge and then hopefully we can start up the car and it should all run beautifully. There we are, she's running beautifully. So I'll just turn her off there a minute. So I hope this video has been useful for anybody who's looking at converting their Triumph TR6 from a Lucas Mark II fuel system over to the Bosch style fuel pump. And you know, helpful in the procedures of how I convert it using the TRGB fuel pump system. But as always guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.